Today's episode is brought to you by Gray Block Pizza. Gray Block Pizza, it's a place where they have pizza, and you knew that already. Gray Block, get that hitter. Today's episode is brought to you by the MNML case. That's the minimal case, the world's thinnest phone case. Go to any country, Zaire, Somalia, United Republic of Congo, Japan, and you will still only have one thinnest case, and that is the MNML case, the minimal case. It's just .01 inches thick. It's basically like a hard condom for your phone. If your phone wants to get into something naughty, sultry, maybe go to a steakhouse, maybe go lean up against a piano or a dark alley and listen to jazz music. Well, there's only one phone case to do it in, and that's the minimal case, the MNML case. There's a 100% money-back guarantee. If you're unhappy for whatever reason, they will refund the purchase of this mentioned case. No need to send the case back at all. Keep the case. Get your cash back. You can get 20% off by visiting mnmlcase.com. Use promo code THEO. That's promo code T-H-E-O for 20% off at mnmlcase.com. Now, if you're going on the Rocky Mountains, you're going to throw this thing into a wishing well. You might want a tougher case. But if you want something sleek and clean and something, I mean, good God, you could slide this thing anywhere. Then you're going to want the mnmlcase.com, promo code Theo. Today's episode is a young man who, I'll be honest with you, I, I don't know if he, had, if he had Tourette's or not, if I'm being totally frank. We were looking for a Tourette's guy, someone who had Tourette's or has had Tourette's. A lot of our listeners know I beat down syndrome when I was young. You know, the doctor said 95% chance that he has it, and then eventually said 40% chance. And by the time I was like 11 years old, they're like 0% chance, maybe 5% chance. So... I understand people overcoming afflictions and rare diseases, but this guy, we look, we wanted to have somebody in who had Tourette's, and Tourette's is a French disease that made its way to America and afflicts millions of people, maybe even hundreds of millions. And and we had a fascinating conversation. Um, he was very kind to come in. He's given TED talks on the subject, and and this is a man who found a way to master, you know, those. Uh, you know, those, you know, one of the Lord's most dangerous and wild gifts, which is Tourette's. Ladies and gentlemen, our guest today is um, Ted Talker, uh, author and Tourette's defeater, Mr. Mark Elliott. I'm sitting here, Mark Elliott. Thanks for joining us today, brother. Thanks for having me, Theo. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. And I was like, because you, you know, I was looking at some of your videos, looking at your TED Talk, and I was like, wow, this guy, you know, at first I was like, because it's about Tourette's, mostly about Tourette's syndrome, you know? It's about a lot of things. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay, so then, well, tell me what Tourette's is, man. So if somebody doesn't know Tourette's, you know, like, what is it? Okay, so... So when I grew up, yeah. Let me start there because I think it's a little bit easier. Okay. The way that that I understood Tourette syndrome is that it's a, a neurological genetic disorder that's involuntary and has no cure. Yeah, it's so, like just somebody working freelance, really on their own. You know, it's somebody just the Lord. I feel like is just remixing somebody, and they're just kind of shook. Well, you know, some people. Uh, I mean, it's sort of. I mean, for it, it's bizarre when you see somebody. Yeah. You know, ticking because it's obviously if you know it it's not as bizarre yeah but you know just from you know if you're just walking or you're at mcdonald's or you're walking somewhere and you just start seeing someone bark like a dog yeah doing things uncontrollably that it's oh we had a dude named jim wager and he would bust out the n-word every now and then you know and i don't use the n-word unless you do you know what i'm saying but um he was this white guy and he would just, and so a lot of times people would just take him over and like set him in like the black area of like the schoolyard, you know, and just run off and like just wait for him to go off, you know? And then, uh, and that was kind of wild. I mean, you know, like, so you have, I mean, I guess kids can be more cruel about it, but yeah, I guess for most people, if they think about it, like if I think about it, I don't know about most people, but 
it's like yeah, it's a it's a it's a disease or it's a syndrome or it's a thing where you are like involuntary. It's almost like somebody is like you're a puppet of of you know some dark lord or something. <laughs> of a dark lord, yes. I mean, some people did. I think some people believe that you actually are possessed by the devil, kind of thing. Because oh, yeah. it just it looks it looks it's just intense when you're watching it. Yeah. Um, but let me just explain a little bit of how I actually experienced it because okay. it sort of evolved over the years. Okay. Because you when, had it. You still have it or you have it? You had it. I don't have it anymore. You beat it. I beat it. Hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah. Wow, you beat it, man. So, um, and I don't say that I cured it. I mean, it was, right. it was a journey. Okay. Um, and we can talk, and I'm right. sure we'll, we'll talk, talk about, about it more. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. But basically, you know, I, I even posted some videos about this, but basically the way that I experienced Tourette's is that there's a very uncomfortable feeling mm -hmm. on the inside. Yes. Okay. So I always would tell people, you know, think of an itch. Right. You know, so if like you think of an itch right now, you'll probably just get one. Right. That's just how it works. I don't know how that works with the mind. Yeah. Itchcraft. That's called itchcraft. <laughs> itchcraft. Yes. So there's, see, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So. But yeah, you can start it. You think it, you get it. You start thinking about it. Okay. So there's this uncomfortable feeling in mm -hmm. my body. Okay. And. When I was a kid, the only way I knew how to get rid of that feeling mm -hmm. was to, or to say a word, okay. or to, you know, hump my, thrust my, my hips, whatever it oh, was, yeah. okay? And as soon as I ticked, mm -hmm. that itch went away. Okay. And it felt amazing, right? You just feel so much better because that discomfort, whatever that itch is, it was gone. Now, of okay. course- when I was a kid, I didn't have that type of understanding about it, though. Mm -hmm. I just was, there was, so basically there's the Right, itch. you don't have an understanding of it, so you're just living it. I'm just living it. And I wasn't like, oh, I have this, this, this and then itch I'm doing and doing this. it. It all was one big mesh mm -hmm. kind of ball of Tourette's, you know? Yeah. Um, and the 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 thing is when you use that analogy, though, you have to be careful because people could then, you know, say, well, why do you just not scratch it? Just don't right. don't scratch it, and that's a great question. But it's tough, you know. Oh, imagine yeah. having ten, like instead of just that one itch that you might be feeling on your yeah. leg. Imagine now having ten, fifteen, twenty itches, yeah. all in one spot. Yeah. Oh well, then if somebody looks at you and says, "I have an itch right now, and I'm not scratching it," that person is usually, you know, that person's with Satan, or that person is like a. That's a sociopath. You know what I'm saying? I mean, Imagine somebody leaning over to you and being like, hey, man, I have the biggest itch. I'm like, you know, my my leg, is, my arm is itching so bad, but guess what? I'm not going to scratch it. You're like, what a psychopath, you know? So, yeah, wanting to scratch an itch, that's totally normal. You can't not. It's like you would do it no matter what. Yes. And growing up, I didn't, uh, I didn't know of any other way it could be. Right. That was just the way it was. Right. And so... My definition of Tourette's now has sort of evolved over time, but this is kind of interesting for me, and this mm -hmm. is just my opinion. Yeah. That itch that I described, to me, that's Tourette syndrome. Okay. That feeling, whatever that is. And then when you see somebody tick or somebody would see me tick, mm -hmm. that was actually me in a sense coping with my Tourette's. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes, it makes sense. So, so the itch is the Tourette's, the uncomfortability, the you know uh, the you know the baffling uncomfortability, the need to do something, the the in, incontrollable desire to act. Yes, um, that is the itch. Yes. That's the Tourette's, and then your reaction, your tick is a. It's the release. It's, it's the way the, that I can get rid of that that, that uncomfortable feeling. Because as right. soon as that feeling goes away, you feel normal. You're normal. Yeah. But with Tourette syndrome, it's difficult because that feeling comes right back. Okay, you know it starts to build up again. Feel you know. Now, how, is there special ways? Like I remember this one kid, like the same kid, this boy Jim Wager at school. They would put like, you know, if they laid him on the no joke, they'd lay him on the ground sometimes and put like cement on his back, cement pieces, and he would not get it for a while, and it would like. What do you mean cement pieces? Calm him down, just like you know, blocks, not cinder blocks, but thick kind of chunks of cement, you know. So, and it would like, I don't know if that was the weight of it or something, it would kind of like, you know, it would exacerbate the desire or the buildup, I guess, of mm. the Tourette's in him, you know? I mean, it was also kind of old school, 
you know, not doctor, you know. You do whatever you can. I mean. Yeah. But I remember, yeah, at one point they were stacking and then it got a little bit weird because people were just stacking pieces of cement on him, you know, like, and at one point he was basically in like a, I mean, it looked like he was in his own little 9-11 there, you know, he was just like in a big pile of rubble. So but he like wasn't. like a karate chop yeah, on yeah, him or something. Yeah, it almost seemed like. Dude, did you ever have that teacher that would come to school? It was always like this weird teacher, and he would come to school and do like the karate presentation for the student body. Did you ever have that? Oh, you're bringing back some memory. I mean, you yes, a vague memory of like you know, sort of like a fifty year old man in like the huge you know in the white uh, oh, yeah. karate jersey, whatever you call it. The uh, yeah, the gee. That, the, gee. the gee, Thank you. Yeah, that was a big thing in the South, where every like other year or something, one teacher would put on like a skill they had, and this one dude had uh, nunchucks, I guess you know, and he had an assistant, and he <laughs> literally they started it. And he hit this girl right in the neck so hard, and then they just shut it down. That no, was no one with nunchucks knows how to use them. Yeah, thank you, thank you, dude. Was she okay? And that should be a crime. Oh, who knows? I mean, this was a this was a different time when they didn't care if everybody was okay, you know. But um, anyway, so yeah, not trying to, you know. But I would see. I saw this. The only experience I had with being around somebody with Tourette's when I was young, and this isn't about me, but it was just uh, you know, this boy that had it and how people would react to him. And then, you know, people would do things like, I remember a lot of people would like kind of hug him or push on him sometimes, and it would it would make him kind of feel okay or comfortable for a little bit. Did you find ways that made the Tourette's feel more comfortable to you or to kind of like quell it so that it didn't build up so fast? Because like you said, you relieved it with a tick. Yes. You would release it or relieve it, and then it would start to build up again. I tried so many different things. Okay. I mean, I I did medications. Okay. Well, the the cool thing is with that analogy that I was describing with the itch and the scratch, now sort of looking back, I see that, um, and again, I'm not a doctor. This is my my diagnosis of how I, how I saw it. When you take medication, in a sense, that numbs the itch. Okay. So now if the itch is numbed, you, you have less of a desire to want to scratch that itch because you don't feel it as much. Mm -hmm. So for a lot of people with Tourette's or sort of other neurological disorders like that, I think uh, that's so beneficial and helpful to them because they don't have that desire, like you're not ticking as much. Okay. For me though, the consequence and the ramifications were the side effects from the medication. Oh, really? Basically like- They got wild ones? What is it? Say that again? What is some of the side effects? Oh, some of the side, it was, um, I mean, I had sedation, I mean, I just was sleeping all the time. Even one time I had uh, really suicidal thoughts. Yeah. And I wasn't a, a really depressed person. Right. But it it just, it messes with you. Yeah. And you're not, you're not the same. It's sort of like there's this kind of wall or this sort of like buffer between- You and the world? Yeah, a little or bit. Or you and yourself almost a little bit. This might that's be a probably more what thing. it's like, you know? Um, that was my experience with it, you know? No, I mean, that's a very accurate experience. I found that with antidepressants. It's, it's like, yeah, I don't feel depressed, but I also don't know if I'm 100% and I'm just sort of separated from my feelings overall. So I don't feel as much of whatever my feelings are. Yes. Um, and for somebody, that might be worth the trade. Right. But for you, that wasn't... It was not worth it, no. It wasn't worth it. I mean, I was... Uh, I, yeah, I mean, it's and it's just tough. I mean, you're in such a difficult position already, you know. I mean, to be, for a lot of people in my situation, or your, your tics are that bad, you're trying to do whatever you can to yeah. end this. You just, I just remember a lot of times crying because it was just so bad. Really? And it was like... Wow. And, you know, I was an interesting and you person. And you got diagnosed with it. I was diagnosed. I mean, I had... It's not self-diagnosement. This is not, yeah, I didn't have a self-diagnosis. I mean, I started when I was real little. Mm -hmm. So I had, you know, like little things like sniffing and. Oh, yeah. Um, my brother even put like a contraption on my nose when I was a kid. Because I was just like, like imagine, it wasn't sniffing. It was like an outward sniff. So imagine like your little brother like constantly sniffing on your oh, face. Yeah. So he oh, like yeah. taped it's something cute, on me. It's, yeah, I could see it being alarming after a while. Alarming for, you know, just, it's not even alarming. Like maybe something's wrong. It's like. What's happening? You know, it's like, this point, is just yeah. weird. Like um, my, yeah, my my brother's a French bulldog all of a sudden, you know, or something, you know. So I kept doing stuff like that, and yeah. then uh, I, supposedly the the way it goes down is my dad was reading and uh, Ann Landers, mm -hmm. which was uh, 
I don't know if it's still around, but it's like a co- a medical column or something in the newspaper. Yeah, was she medical? Was it medical handlers? I know that they who what they have. Dear Abby was self something like that, but some sort of self help. Yeah. yeah, you know, yeah. she was like a grandma that gave you good advice. Okay, yeah. and so yeah. He was reading the article, and mm-hmm. so the way I kind of imagine it, you know, he's reading the article and sees me and reads the article and sees me, and eventually he goes, you know, maybe he's got Tourette's. Right. It was an article about Tourette's and the Anlanders, and we went to a neurologist, and, you know, there's no blood tests or anything like this. This is a... Uh, oh, really? So there's nothing like that? There's nothing like that. This is a behavioral thing, and yeah. um, I think in order to be diagnosed with Tourette's, you need to have both motor and vocal tics. I had both at the time. Yeah, both. I had both. I mean, you were making the the joke about the friend that you knew. I used to tick the N word as well. Oh yeah. So um, well, if you're gonna do it, do it. You know what I'm <laughs> you saying? You gotta go all out. You At know, least if, uh, I, if I get busted saying it, dude, I don't have Tourette's. You know, or I might. I'm gonna put that, that out day there. You do. Yeah, I'm gonna put that out there right now. But yeah, it's like if somebody, you know, um, so you would say that. You'd say you said them all. I mean, it would get. I did, did everything. You con- did you have control? Like, did you know if an N word was coming? You're like, oh I've, shit, I got to get to a white area of town. <laughs> I, I mean, that's pretty much how it was. No I mean, way. well, the thing is, with the analogy that I was describing to you, so first off, I wasn't saying the N-word when I was, you know, in fourth grade. Right. But, uh, you when know, you I've heard of some cases where, you know, you, you hear some kids are saying just inappropriate things when they're young. Yeah. Not even that they have a, they're not even cognitive to understand what they're saying, I don't even think, you know? Right. It's just maybe they know it's not a good word. Right. You know, or something like that. But... As I got older, I also had pretty serious um, OCD. And the OCD was based, you know, obsessive uh, compulsive disorder. And mm-hmm. it was basically the same thing as the Tourette's in the sense of there's this uncomfortable feeling mm-hmm. and I have to do something mm-hmm. to get rid of this. Okay. So the way that it manifested for me was I would, I used to think of what's the riskiest thing I could do. Mm. And whatever the hell that was, that became my itch. So I used okay, to stick. Okay, so give me an example of that. You're about okay. to, I guess. So yeah. I used to stick my hand down the garbage disposal. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, my mom was when she heard that I was doing that. That was oh, that did go dude, over well. Yeah, that's and like it's not. Basin. It's yeah. not that I don't like my fingers. Yeah, I mean I'm so grateful to have my fingers, but there was just this. You want to ride the darkness. You want <laughs> you want to ride the darkness. Yeah, and sometimes I would lift myself over in uh, the ledge of a uh, if I'm on a. On, on a building or, you know, at a friend's patio or something. And then when you're around people, I used to think of what's the riskiest thing I could say. Mm. And this isn't, uh, you know, rocket science. Right. Think about any time you meet somebody. Oh, yeah. Within a half a second, you know, you could, you know three risky things you could say to that person mm-hmm. that would either offend them or would be about their insecurity. Yeah. Within a half a second. You oh, would, definitely, dude. You yeah. know, so instantly, I would see someone. So if I saw, you know, uh, a really Theo. fat person, yeah. what would you say? About me, Theo? Yeah, what would you say? I maybe would say it's okay. The, uh, well, the thing is, so growing up, you know, the the mullet was something that was like totally not okay. Yeah, for us, you know, I may would maybe tick like Hoosier, right. Or mullet. I would maybe start ticking mullet. Oh, just start saying something. That, so it's like something that feels forbidden that you maybe wouldn't say. Yes, that thing starts to bubble up in the back. Yeah. Wow, it's crazy. I gotta say this. If you're wondering what's in my pants, you know what it is. Actually, I had a dream last night that I was wearing something beautiful, and I woke up in MeUndies. MeUndies are the best underwear. I've worn probably in my life, I would say honestly, probably 13 different brands of underwear. And none of them have made me feel as cool, calm, collected, and just dang outright good. And that's MeUndies. It's like a safety deposit box for your crotch. Make you feel so soft. MeUndies are made from micromodal fabric, which is three times softer than regular cotton, and it's been tested by bunnies and people that, that, and that little bear on Downy, on that Downy softener that you shouldn't drink either. That stuff is for your washer. 100% satisfaction guaranteed with MeUndies. That's right. You're going to love these undies, but if you're not into it, you can just send them on back. Hey, you ever ordered underwear through the, through the mail? Well, now you can send yours back. Very similar, but different. And you can get a full refund from MeUndies. They just launched, as well, they just launched a brand new membership. You can level up your top drawer with new undies every month. And support this past weekend. Get your 15% off your first pair. That's free shipping and 100% satisfaction guarantee. Go to MeUndies.com weekend. 
That's right, meundies.com slash weekend. Um, tag us in one of your posts if you put it on the social media on your story so we can share it. Um, we love MeUndies. My whole crew is in them. Let us hold your junk for you. MeUndies.com slash weekend. <laughs> Don't laugh. All right, my bad. So hold on now. Now I'm curious about this because you know what to. So like, say if I you know looked at you right, and I would think like, um, you know, I would think this. You know, uh, the first thing I would think would be what's that store that's in all the malls? Um, you know what's that? Uh, you know that one. I know the one that goes. <laughs> the one. The, the one, one that store. goes. That's in every mall where people buy like nice clothes, but it's even in like smaller malls too. Banana Republic. Mm -hmm. So I would think like Banana Republic, like right when I saw you, you know, or like J. Crew or something, you know, like kind of like a put together kind of, you know, men's shop, right? Okay. And not, and so, but like, yeah, I might not just say that right when I saw you, you know, like I wouldn't think of that as even as a bad thing, but just like, oh, you know, you see the guy's nice, he's put together. So I think, oh, this, that might be something popping in my head, Banana Republic, you, you know, J. Crew, um, you know, Wells Fargo, something in my head that pops up. So then if I was just sitting there, now, is that an idea that comes to you? Here's what I'm asking, sorry. Is it an idea that comes to you of something negative to say? Yes. Okay, so it's I'm an idea. I'm literally thinking, what's the worst thing I could say right now? Okay. And whatever that was, that became the itch. I don't know the physics behind that, like the mechanics of how that worked, especially it, then, but it was just until I then said that word. So if I was with you, right? oh my God, I got to say mullet, I got to say mullet. And I'm, this dialogue is going on in my head. Right. And what was also hard about it. But is it just being an asshole? I mean, it's to some people, it's just be, they're, they're just being an asshole. If they saying, have that. What's the difference between somebody who's just an asshole and somebody who has Tourette's, then I guess? That's a good question. Um, the thing is, is that I don't think, I think it's more about the person's intent. Okay. You know, so where there's a lot of, you know, there's people who say a lot of mean things to people. Right. And they are purposely trying to hurt the person. Correct. Meaning, you know, trying to degrade, trying to do something to um, take them down. Yeah. Where with me, with the Tourette syndrome, and I think, you know, most people with Tourette syndrome, uh, that wasn't what I ultimately was trying to do, mm -hmm. even though it seemed from the outside, dude, you're just saying. You're just saying really offensive things. Yeah. And you mentioned that you were going to, I don't know if we were going to watch it later or not, but there's a, a clip from South Park. Yeah. I don't know if that's one of the ones that you saw. Yeah. yeah it is. Yeah. We have um, some. Do you want to you pop in on now, Nick? Sure. Tourette's is like a cough or a sneeze. <laughs> it isn't contagious like some people think. <laughs> a lot of people with Tourette's have different tics. My tic is that I have to bend my neck and snap my fingers, but a lot of people don't even notice it. This really isn't all that fun. <laughs> ah, shit! <laughs> Piss coming from my ass! Ooh, is that Nick Swartzen? <laughs> I think the last one was actually Nick Swartzen. Uh, Maybe Nick Swartzen has Tourette. <laughs> yeah, dude, he might, bro. He told me the other day he was going to shit out of his armpits. <laughs> so, and I think that, and that was in a Christmas card. So, <laughs> he certainly may have it. Um, okay, so we see a clip like that, right? I mean, first off, I'm laughing because I haven't seen that in a long time. Right, 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 right. I mean, South Park is brilliant. I mean, I think just them in general, I think they have a certain brilliance of how they do things. Yes. Um, Undeniable. I had a, I really had a belief growing up that you have to make light of things. Mm -hmm. um, and I also, I had an amazing support system with my family. And I had a belief that if I wanted to be, if I wanted people to be tolerant of me, I also needed to be tolerant of people. Okay. Mm. And I mean, when I see that now, it's a little bit different from when I had it, but it also was, I mean, it's really funny. I mean, yes. it's, oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, when it's he funny. sees it, when the very first scene, when Cartman finds it, mm -hmm. he learns about Tourette syndrome for us, he goes, I found the golden ticket. <laughs> and he sings this whole song. And, you know, to the because he found a way to be able to say what he wants to, to say. say whatever he wants to say. Yes, right. And that's why I was thinking. Of, I thought of this clip because when you were asking about, you know, what's the difference between somebody who's just a jerk, right? And it's, you know, uh, I don't think most people with Tourette's view it that way. Mm -hmm. I don't think that uh, 
they're the kind of person, or I know Who would I think wasn't. They, no, agreed. You know, it's like it, it's you know because, and this is the other thing to it. So there's funny parts to it, mm-hmm. and it's great. And then there's also all the other times you don't. It's not funny, right? You know, like I was, you know, I had an older brother that uh, that liked men and and was gay, right? That's tough to you know constantly be around your brother and say, oh and, yeah, and tick really offensive things for gay people, right? Right. So yes, it is funny, mm-hmm. and then there's also the pain, right, of what it's like to be in front of people. I mean, I had black friends. Yeah, I had great black friends. Yeah, taking the n word right in front of their face. But then also, like you are like a lesson for everybody in, you know, since it's involuntary, you have the ability to be a le- a, a way that everybody could kind of just learn about, you know, tolerance really. You know, it's almost like you're just like kind of like this tutorial, kind of this bootleg tutorial that's kind of floating around the universe when you have it of, you know, be tolerant, you know, because it's not, it's coming from another realm, really. It's not, you know, it's not like you're sitting there and you got a 30 second timer and you clock in and then, you know, in 29 seconds, you're going to straight up drop an in bomb, you know, or, uh you know that's crazy though it's almost like you're like the bruce willis of like profanity kind of i feel like you know yeah i mean it was obviously <laughs> like you know every pop quiz hot shot i mean you everyone got nine you're... seconds left on this for yeah, it was intense to everybody here in the I mean, cafeteria <laughs> but it was more than just cuss words i mean right. i'm taking racial slurs cuss words you know if i you know walked up to somebody and they had a mole yeah i would start ticking mole oh you know and that was right when uh uh, Austin Powers. Thank you. Yes, Austin Powers came out with the whole moly mole, the guac. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, whole, yeah the yeah. whole scene. I mean, that was real though for me. You know? oh, moles were hella popular then, dude. They've gone back out of style. <laughs> I have noticed that, dude. Along and, with Fred Savage, that was Fred Savage that had that mole in Austin Powers. Oh, it's true, huh? <laughs> and if you have a mole, dude, I had some moles when I was growing up, and I, like a normal person, cut them all off one night when I was drunk in high school, oh. which is something I highly recommend to a lot of people, dude. <laughs> what happens? Because I had the same thought a couple times oh i just took some toenail clippers and just sawed them all off dude had a couple of drinks one of them kept coming back for about six years and finally i got to the root of it you got to get in there get in there um but you know one thing is fascinating man when i hear you talk about this and look we're just yeah we're joking about this in some light you know it's like but we're not i'm not you know discrediting that uh, that you know the, uh, the disease or people that that suffer from it um you know at all like and, and i think it's i think it's fascinating man i mean i couldn't I'm trying to equate it to like, what does it feel like? Because I have this feeling inside of me sometimes that makes me want to like do something bad, you know? It's like a misbehavior almost. It's like, and for me, sometimes it's like a, you know, some people will call it like an alcoholism or something inside of them that like, it's like a restless, irritable, discontent feeling. Mm-hmm. And it's almost like when you see a power line and it's cut and it's on the street, but it's still live, you know? It's like, that's that's the feeling I get inside of myself sometimes at night. And it's like, I can't, it's like I want to do something. It's just like I need to do something right now. And I don't even know what it is, but it's like I need to do something so I can just, then I'll be okay. What I don't even, I don't even know what it is. But when you're talking about Tourette's, it made me think like, man, that's, I that's something like that I get, but it's in my whole being. It's like in my, and I guess when you really have Tourette's and you have that, I can't imagine, I have some control of whether or not I do something. I can't imagine not having control and knowing that whatever this is, like a champagne bubble is just going to bubble up it's to the surface up. of you. Yeah. I don't, I think it's actually pretty correct what you're saying. I mean, I, I really believe sort of everybody has Tourette's now. Yeah. And again, I, I won't keep qualifying it, but mm-hmm. it's this is my experience now. Yeah. You know, of my journey of living with Tourette's for 20 years. Right. You know, my friends and I, we think uh, when I wrote my first book, we were estimating, mm-hmm. I probably ticked around 25 million times. Mm. You know, that's like, comes out to like over 3,000 times that's a, a day, you know? Yeah. So, you know, really experiencing Tourette's knowing what it was like living with a day in day out and then overcoming it and going through that journey. Yeah. I I just I I, f- I think about it and feel about it very differently now and I sort mm. of think that in a sense we all have Tourette's. Yeah. And I so I think it's uh it does make sense that you say that as I'm describing it you're like, you know, I wonder if I feel 
I think I know that feeling or might know that feeling. Right, I can relate idea, a little bit to know? that feeling. Um, I really can. And I don't mean that. I'm not saying that I can relate to having Tourette's. But I can, when you said that, man, it's, it was very specific. Like, man, that's the feeling that I get. It's like yes. an uncontrollable thing. And it it's in me and I can feel it like... It's almost like an amoeba or something that is like alive and it's like, yes. it's not really in a specific spot, but it's like on the edge of my skin, it's in my throat and it makes me want to do something, you know, it makes me want to, you know, for me, it usually comes out in like a master, like masturbation, smoking cigarettes, it makes me want to do something bad to myself. That's what I feel like for me. Um, but yeah, so I, I can't, I could, I can't imagine if you're just sitting there like nine years old. And you yeah. just feel the dark arts bubbling up, dude. Well, I don't. What I what I don't know is why that feeling started for me. Ah, you know. And was there a time before that you didn't have it? I mean, supposedly, you know, I started ticking when I was around four or five. Okay. Uh, and so, whatever it was, you know, my my body, whatever it was, just let's say it is genetic. Mm -hmm. Let's just say it is. You know, I mean, I I experience it way less that way, but. Who knows? But maybe my, uh, you know, one, one of my mentors said to me, you know, maybe your body had a genetic predisposition towards feeling that feeling. Right. Okay. So maybe my body was more sensitive mm. in feeling that feeling. And as I just grew up, you know, as a little kid and you feel that feeling, what do you do as a little kid if you feel uncomfortable? Yeah. You do whatever you can to not feel uncomfortable. Right. So literally, this is how I hypothesize it. Yeah. I'm sitting there one day. I'm making this up. Yes. I have a feeling and I go, oh, I don't like that. <sighs> okay, I feel better. Right. Done. And then 20 seconds go by, two minutes, five minutes go by, and all of a sudden the feeling comes back again. And I go, oh, I know how to get rid of that feeling. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. And it just goes on and on and on. So the way that I think about my Tourette's is that in a sense that I, it was a type of positive feedback loop. Mm-hmm that um, I just continued to do and I didn't ever learn. Like a self-soothing type of thing. Yeah, and I never learned a different way to deal or cope with that feeling. Right. You know, it wasn't... Uh, it, and who knows if you would have. This was probably your... Because a lot of times, naturally, you'll do what you need to do. Yeah, you know, and some people, I, I don't know the exact statistic, but, you know, 50, maybe 50% 50 of people grow out of Tourette's, you know, and some people's ticks wax and wane and different things. And so, you know, everyone's got... A different body, a different. They relate to their body differently. Sensations in their body. Yeah. Um, the way, you know all these different kinds of things. So, um, and do you have to now say if are there people who are diagnosed with? Like, do you does a doctor diagnose you? Is it how does the diagnosis go? Because when I saw it, when I when I was like watching some of your tickles, I, I, I was like, this guy doesn't have any. This guy seems fine. You know, this guy seems good. You know. Well, it's it just depends on what what when what videos you saw of right. me and when. Right now, yes, when you go back to the ones from you growing up and different points in your life and showing, like it's like, oh wow, that would be. Would I couldn't we, imagine that. Would we have the ability to play uh, the tick compilation? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, oh, let's get just, some ticks out. No, no let's get them. <laughs> uh, it's, Sorry, yeah. it's your Mark Elliott. You would just type in Mark Elliott tick compilation. Okay, let's. I want to see the, these bad boys, mm -hmm. dude. Because I'm not sure which one you yeah what which videos you saw. And can you put some uh. There'll be sound with Put it. Put some trap trap music in the background. <laughs> have you ever done that? Have you remixed your ticks? Dude, how have you not remixed your ticks, dude? We'll have somebody, uh, somebody, a uh, fan of the show will definitely uh, put some trap music to Tourette's, dude. How do they not have that? I th well, they have it now. After yeah, this. dude, you could have a whole album. <laughs> oh. So this, once I beat it, I used to then play this clip at really? the beginning of my speeches because no one would believe me that I had Tourette's. That you had it. And it... Penis! Penis! Fuck! 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 I have Tourette's, by the way. Just want to throw that out there, okay? Nigger! 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 What's that guy? We're, we're trying to buy something from you? No, this was a security guard uh -oh. at the library.
He was actually very gracious. He uh, was. Uh, so was this? Uh, is this something that? So you have this bite. Uh, it's like a sound and a biting. For some people, so will only be able to hear this. Um, uh, it's care. me going uh, like this. Huh? How, how, yeah, how, it's basically like Peyton Manning. You're, you're like Drew Brees, basically, but no one's ever snapping the ball. Kind of. Now, was I'm, this I'm something reliving? Like, I'm living my dream of being a QB, right, <laughs> all the time, just nonstop. But that was Dude, so blue forty two. You throw in two blue forty twos right there, bro. It must be an arrowhead or something because they can't see him, so it just keeps <laughs> yeah, yelling "hut." Yeah, yeah. And it's a feeling that's for that. You know, yeah. it's a feeling in my teeth. It's a feeling in my throat. And now, how does this relate to like a cerebral palsy almost? Because you now, because uh, uh, that I feel like are like a. I'm trying to think of something that would be like the deep end of maybe along that same spectrum, you know, where it like gets to so much where you can't even. I don't know it enough. The way that uh, a doctor explained to me pretty early on, mm -hmm. they described uh, Tourette syndrome as the mother disorder to me. Okay. Because we're talking in the realm of neurological genetic sort of involuntary disorders because you can't really compare Tourette's to like MS. Oh, that's or, what I was thinking Parkinson's about. Parkinson's and things thinking like of. that in the same way because with my very little knowledge right. of those kinds of things, like, you know, like a tremor is, that's something that's happening truly not at the will of the person. Like okay. if you have Parkinson's, I think it's like, right. you know, their arm is shaking. It's not just like, oh, I have this itch and I need to keep going like this. It's like they're, the physiology is doing that. Okay. Where with the Tourette's, it's not like my mouth was, it's not that my mouth just did that from a divine. Right. It's, you I'm it. saying, Mark, okay, you need to move your mouth now. <sighs> okay, I feel better. To get better, yeah. So that's why it's it's different, hmm. the, way that I, the way that I understand it. But, but it is the mother disorder. Okay. So underneath it they would just so the mother so it's kind of the root of some of those other disorders you're saying when you said the mother disorder well i don't know if it's the root but he the way he described it is if there's this umbrella and the top is tourette's mm -hmm. there's a lot of comorbid disorders okay. so like add adhd social anxiety anxiety ocd those kinds of things and oftentimes people that are diagnosed with tourette's those other disorders are much more debilitating than, mm. the, than the ticking itself right you know because if you've got really bad OCD. I mean, that can really mess with you and limit you in what you can do in life. Oh yeah, we had a dude I remember in school, and he had a um, I guess it was like a big bag or something. And every, I mean, two three times a day, he'd have to get in this bag. It was like a huge duffel bag, you know, like a ski equipment bag. And this dude in would just get in it, yeah, get in it, zip it up, and then get back out. You know, it was like he was like a magician, like he worked like a magician's assistant, but there was no magician. You know. You just see this dude just lay his bag down, get in the bag, zip it up from the inside, then unzip it and get back out and just sit back at his desk. You there know? he goes again. And it was just like, damn, you know, Lonnie's bagging himself, you know, and everybody <laughs> was just losing their minds. But um, but I think it's funny the different, dis you know, like, man, I can, you know, the more you say some of this stuff, man, and I'm not trying to make this about me at all, but it makes me think a lot about how people describe alcoholism. You know, how they describe it like it is this thing that they just feel like they have to do. There's a something inside of them that is an uncomfort that makes them then feel like they have to engage in drugs, alcohol, illicit activities to quell the uncomfort. It's not like most of the time it's not people like, oh, I love the taste of beer all the time. That's why I drink or that's why I love cocaine. It's like there's an uncomfort and to quell it, these are the things that I'm using, you know. Um, so it's really fascinating because it sounds in some ways like some of the roots are the same. There's an uncomfort that builds up and then you are doing you're you're doing something just to relieve it, just to make it go away. It's not and it's gonna come back. Yes. And so how do you get from where you were then to where you are now? Where now, you know, you don't you are, uh, re uh, you know, a recovering, you're recovering Tourette's. I'm a recovering ticker. A recovering, recovering what is it called? No, I made the joke, a recovering ticker. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're a recovering ticker. Um, right? I just want to say, you know, I, I, I do understand what you're saying, and I don't think it's that far of a stretch. Right. What you're describing. Yeah. Um, which I know is a sensitive issue. Yeah, yeah, and I, because, and I, I know it is too, yeah. And so, uh, you know, because... 
but we also just live in very sensitive times right now. Yeah, that's true. You know, and so it's it's difficult because some of the things that I'm trying to say, it's it's a delicate balance because I'm one, I'm sharing my experience. Right. Um, I do believe though that by sharing some of my experience, it might shed light into other people's experience of them dealing with Tourette's. Yeah. Because growing up, I only saw it one way. Hmm. It was you have Tourette's, this neurological genetic disorder that's involuntary and has no cure. So, uh, you know, with respect to that feeling, this is kind of the way I think about it. So if there's that feeling, and mm -hmm. as I got older, I had more of that awareness about, okay, look, I've got this itch and this scratch. I don't know how else to change it though. Mm -hmm. This is, this is, this is my... It's like the itchy and scratchy show from uh, Simpsons a little bit, but like in one person. In one person. Yeah. Can you imagine? It's basically like Tom and Jerry constantly. All the time. Of you. Yeah. And, and you're it, both characters. I'm both characters. And it's also, I'm, it was a war zone on the inside. Wow. Because not only was I just, you know, it'd be one thing if it was just myself on the planet and there's not a single person, it's just me all day scratching. Right. You know? But it was, you know, I, I, I didn't have a lot of self-confidence. I'm So I'm thinking about the feeling and then I'm going, oh my God, I'm about to take mullet. What's Theo going to think about me? Oh my God, is he going to be offended? Oh my God, what's going on? And all this is going on through my head. Or imagine, you know, you're about the to say the N-word. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Or when I was in an airport, I would take bomb all the time. You know, things like that. So Jesus. it's... You know, or I mean, more funny ones too. Where yeah. you know, when I was with a girl, I would tick uh, other Listen, girls' names. Really? I would tick the P you know, word or not. You say I would vagina? tick P word everything, man. It was crazy. <laughs> yeah, you know? dude, that would be so crazy. Imagine if right when you pick a girl up and you're like, uh, drop her off early. <laughs> you just she can tell immediately if you're interested or not. <laughs> the funny thing is, one time there was oh, a girl. Man, that's crazy. Bro. No, there was a. This At girl. least you get it out of your system. The rest of us have to mill around all night, <laughs> you know, just bullshitting, just spending one, forty dollars at Chili's, and then we got to cut the to the chase. And we're not just, even interested. Yeah. It's more of a test. So if you yeah. say, it, you kind of just see where they're at, and then. But what the funniest thing was, the, one of those uncomfortable things wasn't even a sexual term. Mm -hmm. It was I met a girl. Just I just. I was crazy about this girl. We go on the first date, and I start ticking "I love you" oh. on the first date. I mean, that is that was painful in a way. <laughs> that just... Oh, that's painful. I do, I've done that over text too, where you get a girl's number and then seven minutes later, you're like, I, I love you. <laughs> and then you get blocked. I think I have text rats. But no, man, uh, and I should have made a joke out of that moment. That's a real moment, man. I, I can't imagine that, dude, because then it's like, well, did that start to show you something like unique about like feelings and stuff though? Because then it's like, you know, say you, because there is something funny if you meet a girl and like in your head, you know, you go off on, you know, this yeah. adventure, like, oh, I'm in love with this girl. There's something special. And, and sometimes that happens just immediately out of the gate, you know, you'll, and within two minutes, you have all of these, you know, you guys are living in a castle and she's beautiful and there's all these perfect things going on in your head. <laughs> Did you start to find that sometimes your Tourette's was a good, like, crystal ball of people that were, like, good people or people that meant something to you? I didn't feel it that way. You didn't? It was just a nightmare. It was. It was. But you know what I'm saying? Kind of I like, know what you're saying, but it just was... It wasn't that. It wasn't that at oh, all. Oh, man. It really was... I had no control over my mind. Yeah. No control over my body. Yeah. And that is why, though, I think it relates to so many things because that feeling, whatever it is for people, we all have these feelings and, and so often don't feel we have control. And what makes Tourette's unique, I mm -hmm. think, is that, and again, I haven't been an alcoholic, I haven't done these things, but for all of us that have that feeling, you know, if you have that uncomfortable feeling and you want to get a drink, you have to go get a drink. Mm -hmm. Or if you want to overeat or you want to just eat to cover that feeling, you got to go to the refrigerator, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. With Tourette syndrome, you don't have to go anywhere for it. Mm. It's just right in your body. It's like a one-stop shop. It's just a one-stop shop. So I, you know, in, in some sense, I think that's what makes it unique. But I think what also then makes it very universal is is that we all, and I think there's, you know, as a society, we have trouble dealing with those feelings. Right. And I just learned a very specific way to do it. Genetic or not, it doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. That was just how it went for me. Um, that you learned a very specific way to deal with the that feeling. And what I think makes it also different is, you know, when somebody, like, have you ever, you know, been uncomfortable and you just go to the refrigerator? Oh, yeah. And you don't even realize it, maybe. You just, you're just all of a sudden at the refrigerator. The thing is, we don't call that a medical condition. Right. 
that's just you dealing snacking, yeah, snacking, you know. Um, and again, it's not like snacking is the same thing, the same no, dynamic. No, no, we're not for saying a, that. For, it's okay. You can, you know, for a kid that's ticking. Our the audience isn't a bunch of freaks, man. Our audience you is know? like totally, uh, you know, usually understanding about uh, like you know discussing things. But I think it's neat is that for me, when I started to shift my perception that way with help, mm -hmm. everything changed. But I want to know what is so that it seemed like you had you started to find some solution for yourself yes. in that moment. So as I was describing with the the metaphor, is it a metaphor and analogy? I'm not sure. It's okay. It's okay. Dude, yeah. It's, I don't know uh, anything and everybody's been listening for a while now. Yeah. So <laughs> I think our well, audience is pretty understanding. Okay, so that, if I've got that dynamic, I got this itch and I got the scratch. Mm -hmm. Basically, when I was a kid, doctors told me, hey, that itch, by the way, that's a neurological genetic involuntary thing. You got right. Just let it go. So imagine as a kid, what do you think I do when they tell me that? That just becomes basically the law of gravity. Like I don't even question that ever. You don't even question what the the the, the desire to act out or do something or say something strange. Or no, because it's they told me that's uh, that's, well, that's just science. That's well, gravity. That, that's yes, your gravity. That's Tourette's. Right. And remember, it's no cure. This is involuntary. This is genetic. Yeah. I mean, think of those words as a child, as you're hearing those words, like it's genetic, it's invol you know, neurological, you know. Well, especially if, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, I would think it would very much sentence you to a way of thought and belief. Yeah. And, it w and these were great doctors, by the way. Yeah. These were good people. I even know some of them still, you know. It, but why then as a child, with respect to this whole itching and scratching and ticking and all this stuff, why would I ever evaluate it again or even know how to evaluate it? Right. That? It's just, okay, this whole thing that's going on, this is Tourette's. Right. It's all just under one big label of Tourette's syndrome. Okay. So what took you out of that okay. then? And I know you're getting there. So just, I want to preface that because that helps see. It's like, why would you ever question that? Right. Like so, if people tell you like, yeah, you're, you'll, you'll never bend your leg from a kid and, and you're a child, then you'll just probably think your whole life you never will. Exactly. Yeah. And rarely would some people even think to go back and think, well, can I bend my yes. leg? Yes. And when I, when I speak, oftentimes, you know, I, I talk about with childhood, like we're told so many things as a kid. Oh, yeah. That some are told totally true and some are totally false though yeah so you know this is just what you're told and the the thing is is the one caveat to that is as a kid you don't know the difference between what's true and false right so you don't know the difference between santa claus and eat your veggies yeah it's the same thing oh it's interesting i was thinking about that last night that kids believe that santa claus exists that's fucking baffling dude it's baffling you believe there's a senior citizen in the sky you know what i'm saying <laughs> traveling like that they'd shoot him down over <laughs> half these countries Somalia in this you know day and age. Oh, you know how many other small sleighs would pull up alongside him in Somalia, <laughs> steal all of his shit. <laughs> Pirates. Yeah, different times, you know. So, but yeah, but as a kid, we believe that wholeheartedly. So, it really, does yes. take you into the mind of a kid. That it's good to try that on, right? Right. So then, when I was older, I guess this is now eight year, nine years ago. I met this other speaker, and he introduced me to these amazing classes called Executive Success Programs. Mm -hmm. And these courses had nothing to do with Tourette's, nothing at zero to do with Tourette's syndrome. Okay. These were classes that teach people about emotional intelligence, fears, limiting beliefs, um, all those sorts of things, things that you don't learn in regular school. Right. So what when did he- Did dude named Gary that did it? Gary? Yeah. That did what? Told you about the classes. No, his name was Daniel. Oh, sorry. That's so funny. You're a mind reader as well. No, I just know a dude named Gary, and he sent me some links. But I was just wondering <laughs> so if it was the funny. same guy, Gary Whitehill. Onward. I don't know Gary Whitehill. Yeah. No, so, great guy. The cool thing was I ended up finally going to the classes. Again, zero to do with Tourette syndrome. Okay. They just teach you about the human psychodynamic. So I ended up going through the classes. It's a 16-day course. And after the first five days, I started to learn so much about myself of just how I work. And again, when I say mm. I learned about myself, right. literally what I'm saying is you go to school to learn about math, yeah. arithmetic, well, that's math. Uh, yeah. Is it? But yeah. also, yeah. Um, you learn about science, those things, right? Yeah. But outdoors. Those kinds of things. But yeah. when you're an adult, right, there's a bunch of things at school, most schools, general public doesn't teach you about, like, how do you deal with fear? How do you deal with failure? 
Yeah. Like things that are very real oh, for all of us. And yeah. you just kind of are supposed to figure it out when you're older kind of thing. Yeah. Like how is race relations not a class that they have in elementary school? You all know of that stuff. Yes. Yeah. Okay. It's unbelievable. We're and still how do you. kids about a fucking Gerald Ford dude. You know what I'm saying? Who I think played for the Celtics or was a president. <laughs> Who gives a fuck is what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Emotional intelligence should be the number one thing we're teaching yes. kids okay. after how to communicate. He played for the so Lions. Who does he play for the Lions? He did. Gerald, Gerald Ford? Gerald Ford, I'm pretty sure. The president? Back in the day, yeah. Did he? Oh no. I, I no could idea. see that, actually. Is that not true? Did I make that up? I'm I sorry. I could see that. <laughs> it's okay. I have no idea. Go on. But the point is, I didn't learn about those kinds of things. And I started going through it. I started learning about these things. Right. Um, and a lot In the of, executive, what is it called again? Executive? It's called executive success programs. Okay. So I started to learn a lot about the nature of fear as well. Now, with OCD, remember... Um, I also had really bad OCD and I started like starting putting pieces together and go, you know what? Like maybe that feeling that I've been talking about, I go, maybe there's, I have a bunch of fears around it. Mm. Cause there was, you know, the, remember it's like, you have to do something to feel better. So if you don't do it, it's not okay. Right. And I started realizing like, maybe I have, maybe I have some fears there. So right after the first five days, I ended up going down to, um, Panama. Mm -hmm. I had a, a bunch of speaking gigs in Panama. And with my OCD and stuff with the Tourette's, I had a bunch of shit around my face and touching. You maybe have heard of people like this. It's oh, like, yeah. you can't, you know, because germs and all the da, da, da. Oh, yeah. Just and I had freeze tagging themselves all the day. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> fucking some dude just sitting there patty caking himself and he fucking, one dude almost knocked himself out one time, dude. He high fived himself about 800 see, times. Almost you're broke making, his wrist. you know, it's funny you're making a joke, but seriously, sometimes if a friend touched my, like, one side of my face, I would go, dude, you got to touch my other side of my face. Yeah. <laughs> just stuff like that. Dude, it's so funny you say this. When I used to walk down the street when I was young, I would, I would like bite my, my, this oh. side of my mouth and then I would have to bite on this side of my mouth. Same. And I would bite on this side of my mouth and, it, dude, I, I, I did that for probably eight years, man. Okay. And Same. Then I, and then when me. it went away, I never fucking. I would. Th it was all I would think about when I was walking and biting, making sure I was even. And then when it finally went away, I never fucking thought about it again. Ever again. Until pretty much maybe now and one other time in the past twenty five years. So similar stuff to that. So basically, I'm at the beach and I go, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna start going against this. And I had you know again all these fears about germs in my face, and I go. F this and I take all the sand on the beach and I start rubbing it mm. all over my face. And it was I really look at that as the beginning of beating my Tourette's. Because it was it was finally me going, You don't control me. Mm. I'm gonna start taking control here. And and that experience was just so emotional and also just eye opening for me. Cause I you know, what do you think I said to myself after that? Like I'm rubbing this all over and then I'm there and I go, I'm okay. Ah, uh, yeah. I'm okay. Right. Like, yeah, the devil didn't come. A dragon didn't, the, the earth didn't split open and fire eat yes. me. You know, all the kids from my childhood didn't even come back and rip me back into the fucking universe and None cut of that my shit. genitals off. Nothing. You know? So I ended up going through yeah. more of uh, the classes and the president of uh, the company, her name was Nancy Salzman and she ended up coming to my training and- on the sixth day, you start to look at fears. And it was really cool because I had had enough shifts at this point that I go, you know what? I might be afraid of losing Tourette's. Mm. You might be afraid of losing it? Losing it. Like stopping it. Like, a, and again, I know it sounds crazy. And it was, if you would have, if like I would have known you, Theo, back then, and you would have known me the day before I would have started that training. Yeah. And if you would have said, hey, Mark, you might be afraid of losing Tourette's, I would have been like, what did you just say to me? Why? Because it was your identity? It was so much. And again, I wouldn't, even if, even if you would have said, Mark, it's part of your identity. I go, what do you mean it's part of my identity? Yeah. I wouldn't even, even have known how to talk to you about that. Oh yeah. This is just, I have Tourette's. That wild boy. Yeah. You know? So. Wow. That is crazy that somebody would say that because it's the last thing you would think, but you found that there was truth in it. For me, there was truth. And I started to do a bunch of explorations and I finished that course and that was really all about the Tourette's was like, you know, looking at the fear, but I just started learning just a lot more about my mind and my thoughts and how a lot about the mind body connection mm -hmm. about how, you know, things are connected. And so that was September or excuse me, that was over a summer. I took that whole course. Mm -hmm. The whole school year went by 
and I'm back on the road speaking. At the time, I was uh, I was speaking a lot at high schools and colleges all around the country, mm -hmm. and uh, did no more of the classes. By the end of that school year, that feeling had gone down so much that literally I started to need to almost like fabricate ticking a little bit. Mm. Oh wow! So now you're because, playing a role of a ticker. Yes. To keep no, up I with still your thing. needed to. T I still had the urge to tick. So it wasn't like it was done by any right. means. But it was, you know, these people were hiring me, and I had Tourette syndrome. You better show up with fucking Tourette's, dude. Yes, you know what I'm saying. If you say you're fucking, you know, <laughs> running dope, you better show up with a mule. You yeah. know, <laughs> like Don't that come kind in a cup of thing. And tell me it's milk. Exactly. So at that point, I go, you know what, Mark, you can beat this. And I ended up going back the following summer, and I took some more courses. Really? I was there for 17 days, and now I came with the intention. Mm. And every day I worked on my mind, my body, everything relating to the Tourette's, anything that I could think of that, because basically what I found was is that my Tourette's was way more emotional and psychological than it was physiological. Wow. Man, it's... Uh, uh... I can't even tell you enough, like everything you're saying, it's very similar to stuff that you, that you hear in a lot of like 12 step programs, you know, it's like, it's whatever's behind the behavior. Yes. Well, ultimately, and what I, what I talk to people about is that I found, not I found through the help of some amazing people and tools, I found the cause of your Tourette's of the Tourette's. I, and let me, let, let me clarify. Let me clarify. I don't even know if I found the, the cause cause of it all. But I found a way to short, short, short circuit the whole system. Yeah. And I found of so much of what was causing that feeling. So that's what I'm saying. I don't know what originally caused it, mm -hmm. like how that feeling got there. Right. Fine. Maybe it's neurological, genetic. Who cares? Right. Okay, great. So I had it. The question is, what can you do now? Yeah. And, uh, you know, with the incredible help of these people and, and ESP, I, I found a way to begin to undo it. Um, so those were courses you we went to. Now, what about somebody who doesn't have the money to go to courses or who's not like, what can, you know, somebody that has like a, a tick even, even if their tick isn't at the level where they would get them, you know, it would be classified as Tourette's, sure. you know? Um, I believe that there is a bigger thing going on in the world where it's like, we don't use our human interaction isn't as used as much anymore. Like we're kind of out of this like colonial survival kind of times and tribal times and we're getting a lot more into like a sedate time. And so our nerves, which used to be like kind of the leaders of like, what was going on, what was over the, the, the ledge if somebody was outside, is my family all in the home? The, you know, the, the, that system that was always a running in us, a security system, now has kind of been like idle in us for a long time. And so it seems like I wouldn't be surprised if there could be things starting to kink in it or, you know, it's settling into its kind of new unnecessary system, you know, unnecessary use. Mm. So I could see like a lot of things like alcoholism, Tourette's, like just uh, malfunctions of it you know, or um, errors in the, you know, just from not use, you know, like, because when you think about how much in a couple of generations, we're not using our fight or flight much at all. And to think such a powerful system sitting inside of us, it's like, what's going on there? You know, it's almost pretty bizarre. And, and I have no proof of that. But when I just think of things on like a more of like a macro level, I could easily see and hearing you say that and seeing how many people are like, you know, struggling with their feelings and stuff these days and, and, and feeling like a desire, but not knowing what to do. Um, I could see a lot of that being a little bit in the same umbrella, like you were talking about earlier, you know? Yeah. Um, well, I think it's, but, but back to the question, what do people do if they don't have that? They don't have the ability to go to the um, executive uh, programming and they don't have that. Well, I think. I mean, one, I hope even just being able to talk about it like this can begin to help somebody see what if there's a different way you can look at it. Right. You know, because... Okay, so reframe something for me. Well, simply even a, a, as I've been describing is when I grew up for 20 years, this is neurological, genetic, involuntary disorder with no cure. So the question is, okay, maybe that's true, maybe that's not. The, what an individual can start thinking about is what if that's not true? What if that's not true? Like why, I think just in general, what would it mean to be just more curious mm. about yourself and your life? Mm. Let's say you can't go get help. You can't do whatever. What, you know, can you just start 
questioning yourself and go, right. what if it could be different? Again, I mean, the way that it started was, you know, I did, I went to a class, had a really different insights into myself. And then I went to a beach and I go, I'm going to do something different here. Yeah. I'm going to start thinking about this and see what's on the other side. Contrary action. You know, um, because it was just so emotional for me not to do that. Oh, yeah. Um, so I think really one of the biggest prerequisites for anything in life, if you want to change, is you have to, one, be curious. Yeah. And you have to want to change. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they had a dude, uh, I remember this dude, Samuel, when I was growing up, they said he couldn't walk, right? He's in a wheelchair. Mm. It turned out his parents were too lazy. They never taught him to walk. Mm. So it turns out one day he fucking got up. You know, a couple buddies helped him in the gym, and by the afternoon, he's shooting hoops, you know? This was someone you knew? Yeah. And it's like, what the fuck, man? You know, like, <laughs> but if he doesn't ever get curious or question that thing, if you just sit in his chair forever thinking like, yeah, this is where I'm going to be. And man, when you say that, what you were talking about is contrary action. You're talking about like, man, I don't want germs. I don't want things in my face. When things touch my skin, it makes me feel uncomfortable. I'm going to fucking stick my head into the fucking universe you know, yes. two handfuls at a time yes. and go through the looking glass. I mean, that's next level. That's next level in that moment for you. But it's also, it's just contrary action. It's like, yeah, like I have trouble, like, um, you know, there's a lot of therapist methods where it's like, okay, let's look through your past and, and think of what happened and try and figure it out. And then there's a lot more active, proactive therapist methods um, that I've found from going to therapy where they're like, I don't care what happened in your past. If you want to have a better sexual relationship with your girlfriend, you need to get in bed with your girlfriend and lay there and start there as opposed to sitting in a room and wondering, well, I don't know why we have these problems, you know, mm. like, but I've definitely started to notice that there's two methods from going to therapists. And so it's kind of like what you're describing. It's like, you can sit there and know the facts and go through and the file folders and look back through a lot of your history, or you can... Like you did, you had a frame of reference, a frame of perspective, it sounds like, and just... Well, I want to say, for me, what was cool is I, it was really both ways. Because by going through the class, and, and really, really what happened is, is that I was able to proactively yeah. lower that feeling. So that itch, within about a year and a half, went down 90%. Wow. So, and, and a lot of that feeling I found was through a bunch of triggers throughout my whole life. Mm. So, it, it was this beautiful synergy between going deep in there. And the other reason I felt lucky is because a lot of people are willing to go deep in there, but they don't have a tool that really can help them find where to go. You need help. How to get rid of it. It ends up that the tool was incredibly sharp. I and see. so I was able to go in there. And as I was going through some of these processes, which is just conversations with people, I would have this amazing experience or realization. And all of a sudden that feeling would go boom, boom. I mean, I'm, I'm going down because the feeling would start going down. So it wasn't like I, for a way that a lot of people, a, a way that I think a lot of people try to beat their Tourette's or help their Tourette's or whether it's alcoholism, OCD, or, um, Anything in life where it's, it's a type of challenge like that, mm -hmm. sometimes you just sort of stick your head down and you just lean right into it and you go. Yeah. And that's, that's great. And that is what some of what I did. But what's also really nice is what if there's a way that you can make that, that really uncomfortable feeling diminish? Mm, yeah. And so you don't, it's not such a, a mountain to climb. Right. And that's why I feel so grateful because... I didn't have to go climb a mountain. Right. I had to work my ass off. Yeah. And there was something deep inside of me. Yeah. Some, I also was really sick as a baby for mm -hmm. an intestinal thing. Mm -hmm. And I think that that played a lot into it, but I, I have a really strong will. Right. And I was willing to, on that beach, go, mm. you're going in. Yeah. And I don't know where that came from. Yeah. But I had that in combination with a group of people and tools that made that battle so much easier. You need help. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it, it, it wasn't just like, I was like a Spartan going. Yeah. It was, I was a Spartan, plus I had, I don't even know what, you I had mean. some training I had, wheel humans. You train, had yes. partners, you had people that knew what to do. Yes. You had conversations that a lot of time can unlock. Yes. Yeah. That 
literally unlocked oh, it's my uh, potential. My my, I mean, literally the way that I I connect with it is they helped me in combination with how hard I worked. I literally became more conscious. Mm. I became more self aware, and yeah. that, that I go, oh, that that feeling. And and one metaphor that I tell people as a way to describe this is one way that I got helped is. So there's this feeling, and I was a little kid, and I go, oh, that's a bad feeling. That's a shitty, bad feeling. But what if there was a way, when I was a little kid, which was not possible, mm -hmm. that I could have decided it was a good feeling? Mm. And the way that I think about it is, do you, do you like massages? Mm -hmm. Do you like the kind of massages where it's like super painful, like oh, elbow yeah. in the back? Oh, dude, I told him last week we paid a couple of Vietnamese dudes to beat <laughs> us up downtown. <laughs> 70 so bucks, you like. Huh? You're one of those sickos. They had a you top like rope it. in there and everything. They'll come off the ropes. They'll do whatever yes. you want. So you like it hard, right? Yeah, I like some attack in there. Okay. You know? now, I do like you a know? little bit of fucking, you know, <laughs> Vietnam too, if you know what I'm saying. Yes. I don't know how that ends, but yeah. it'd be, you know. Yeah, look, it, just, it ends at 70 bucks. It's 70 bucks only lasts about a half hour. <laughs> the question is, though, uh, do you know people, though, that don't like it hard like that? Yes. Okay. So this is what's so interesting. Here you have two people getting a massage and one person loves the pain. Mm -hmm. Another person hates the pain. So what if when I was a kid, I could have changed my perception of that feeling? Like I had that uncomfortable feeling. Mm -hmm. What if I could have loved it? Right. Right. Yeah. What if you'd have been, been somebody that loved it? Yeah. Now, again, there's no way I could have done that. Right. As a but some people get scared and they get excited. That baffles me sometimes. Some people like, you know, like evil Knievels, they jump off of stuff and they're right. fired up. Dude, if I go flying off of something on a motorcycle, yes, I'm not doing well. Yes. You know? <laughs> so, like, that is no, very I, alarming. And, and I wouldn't even try. I mean, for right, me, that's right, like yeah. a nightmare. Yeah, I would think of it as a nightmare. But it's interesting how some feelings to some people are totally a different yes. feeling. So. What I was able to do with the help of all these people is, is that I was literally able to manufacture and literally almost rebuild my pathways. Did you do EMDR? Did you do any of that or no? Mm -mm. And it was all through just, a, or a lot of it was through, I mean, I know it's a lot of work. That stuff is a lot, of, you know, it's a lot of work. If you want to go back and really work on stuff, you know, I know that it is a lot of work. Yes. The cool thing was, is that my experience was, is that the way that the process was, it was incredibly it was formatted. It was formatted, and it was also very simple. And at the end, not as simple. You have to be very skilled to work with somebody, mm -hmm. but meaning, within thirty minutes, you know, I could talk about an experience and feel very different. Do you work with this company now? Is this a yes. company you're partnered with? So it was really cool. Is that so? I was going around the country speaking, you know, for years, and then, uh, you know, it was an interesting thing. Like I'm on the stage. You know, in 2011, I was college speaker in the United States by uh, Campus Activities Magazine. Okay. So I'm you sharing- You went to NACA and did those and all All that? those things, yeah. Yeah, yeah. APCA? All those. Oh, yeah. So the reason I'm sharing that is because like my whole life was Tourette's, you know, and I'm going around talking about Tourette's and- Oh, yeah. You're and that really the shaky whole bad thing, boy. Dude, <laughs> shaky Jango, bad boy. bro, you know? And I was, my whole thing was really about kindness. Right. It was really about tolerance and kindness. Um, and it was an interesting thing though, because now- here, I'm trying to help people on stage, and yet I'm getting helped in a whole other way. Like, I'm getting penicillin back here, right. and I'm having a 40-minute talk with people. So when I realized that there was a way that I could help people in this way, mm -hmm. that's how I wanted to learn how to help people. I see. So you were helping people. You were talking about Tourette's, and then you got involved with the ESP group. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> um, and so, you know, I was able to do that over the last, you know, five years, and it's been unbelievable. And one cool thing was... After uh, we started, uh, after, you know, what happened to me, and, and again, ESP had nothing to do with Tourette's, but once it happened, uh, you know, the founders, they started going, you know, Keith Ranieri and Nancy Salzman, I think they started to go, what if we could, what if we could replicate this with other people? And so over the last four years, we've been able to replicate it with 10 other people with mm. Tourette's. Get into the program and get better. Yes. Wow. Well, we created a, a special thing just for people with Tourette's. And this is the crazy thing. So it took me like a year and a half to get down 90% as I was describing. Guess how fast it's been replicated? I don't know. Take one guess. Seven. Seven what? I don't know. Like seven months? 
Yeah, I think so. Four hours. Oh, wow. Jesus, man. I hate guessing. <laughs> People can get rid of using this, can get rid oh, of man. Tourette's in four well, hours. Oh, no. No, they can't. They really. So, I kid you not, it was probably one <laughs> of That sounds like something I would say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dead serious. So this, so I want to be really clear. It's not saying anybody can get rid of their Tourette syndrome. It's saying people that had severe Tourette syndrome that had tried tons of different things that wanted, that deeply wanted to get rid of it and end it for themselves. And also, you know, we went through quite an interview process because we're looking, you know, we were looking for very specific people that, you know, we thought just met a bunch of different conditions that Mm -hmm. thought, you know, that they would be a good candidate for this. For all of those people, I would say seven, seven or eight, two or three out of the 10 are down 70%. Wow. And the other six, seven are down 90 plus. Wow. And what was so neat is, is that once this started happening over the last uh, four years, uh, we had this incredible filmmaker who, uh, he goes, we got to start filming this. So we started to film it. And so what was so neat is, is that, you know, I would find someone with Tourette's or someone would tell me about somebody with Tourette's. Yeah. And we would go through this whole process to see if they would be a good candidate. And then once we thought if we had, you know, a good candidate, a film crew would go out to their life, film their whole life with Tourette's. They would come work with us in Albany, Mm -hmm. beat their Tourette's, and then we would go back into their life and film their life without Tourette's syndrome. Do you guys, y'all aren't like in the, it's not, you guys can't be like in the Special Olympics or anything. I feel like you could fucking run that shit if you could tighten. I can't be in the Special Olympics, no. But I will tell you, I'd much rather just train for the regular Olympics now. I mean, just because it's, I mean, life is so different now. Is it really? What do you miss about having Tourette's, man? Like really having it. You know, the thing that I, I miss is, I, I miss in some ways, let me think about this for one sec. I, I, I'm trying to think, I'm going to try and think what I would miss. The, the thing is, you, people knew me. Yeah. Oh, you're a rare element, man. People I remember. People knew yeah, me. People knew you. So part of what my experience has been over the years is that, I had to start how to learn in a way that I never did before, how to relate with people. Mm. I can I can understand that. And I think, you know, that's not unique to Tourette's. I think we all have different things. You know, you're a um I don't I don't know a lot of your history, but I, you know, you were a comedian. You know, you, you've been a comedian in a long time. Yeah. So now imagine if somebody said, Hey Theo, comedy's done. Never can make a joke again. And then think about what it would mean to how every conversation now you had with somebody. Oh, that's, that's a really good correlation, man. It would be baffling. You know? And so that's also what was so neat is, is that I was going through the classes. I was taking a lot. I was doing a lot of work to also build a foundation just to learn how to be more me, how to learn how to be with people again, because my whole life I always had the Tourette's. Mm. I always had this, this thing. Yeah. And you, that... So it was it was interesting because you know the first whole journey was beating the Tourette's, right? And then there was a whole other journey after like, well, that. Who were you without the Tourette? Exactly. It was almost like it was like it was. <clears throat> now you're Clark Kent, and you're like, well, who the fuck is who? Who, who am I? Yes, dude. It's funny you say some of that. When I was, um, you know, in high school or right out of high school, I got I did uh, reality television. I worked on MTV for a little while, and I remember after that you got real popular and went to school, and all these kids knew you. And this is back when they only had you know forty television channels and. But then after that, I didn't know, I still, it had been like real formative years. I didn't really know who I was. You know, I was just kind of getting out into college, into the world. And then I became, you know, I was this guy that was on this, on television, you know, and, and it was very uncomfortable to get away from that. I mean, I remember having visceral reactions. I remember I'd go to the gym and like I, I would sweat and it, without even doing anything, my head, it would itch. I'd feel these mm. needles in my neck and head and like extreme uncomfort because I had, I was nobody without that thing, kind of. Yes. And I didn't want to be that. Th- I didn't like that, you know, and I didn't, and I wanted to get away from that. But at the same time, it was like, I had no clue who I, who I was, you know, because for a couple of years, this was kind of who I was. It just gave me, everybody always came and talked about that, or that was the thing, or something, or, you know, and it was just hard to be, it was hard to learn who I was, you know? Yes. I can't even fathom that, man. Like, 
being in this shaky cage and all of a sudden you know you're out of the cage and you're like well fuck it's kind of wild out here it's been wild and it, i it must think have felt for, naked almost in, a, in I, some way absolutely and i absolutely felt naked and i think what's hard for a lot of people that were close to me was growing up i was I was such this gregarious kid and I was outgoing. I was, you know, I was student body president of my high school. I, I did plays and sports. I became an inspirational speaker. But how could you do all that with Tourette's, I wonder? Well, the thing is I learned to compensate so much. Right. That I did. And again, I had this incredible support system that, I mean, and th what most people don't have. But I... I learned to that even because I didn't have that, that strong sense of self. Yeah. I just did whatever I could to try to be normal, to try to get people to like me because like I felt like I role. was, because I was three, I felt like always three steps behind because I had the Tourette's. Yeah. So the moment I start, I, I met you, I'm already behind because I got the Tourette's. So I got to make up for all this stuff so that you go, okay, will you like me? Am I okay? Yeah. So that really has been the most profound experience of all this is finally starting just to be more me. Yeah. And just going, I mean, now I, when I talk to friends too, like the way that I think about my life is like my whole life, I was in the deep end of the water yeah. and I didn't know how to tread well. And I'm just, you know, trying to figure it out, get by, not offend people. What are people thinking? You know, all that stuff. And, and really only like the last two years, did it feel like I made it to the shallow end? And I just started walking out of the pool. Mm. Yeah, and that I'm, that. and that it's just like I'm learning how to be normal. Yeah. But just like on the inside, it's just so much more quiet now, mm. and I can just learn how to be with somebody and be with me. Yeah. And something that I never imagined, I didn't even know that could exist for me. Like it was just right. It yeah, it was like a, it was like being another ethnicity almost, or being another so, culture. Yes. Yeah. So that's been a, it really has been these different journeys, but so I'm excited to keep, keep going and keep finding more of me now and really. Yeah. Can it flare back up Tourette's? So the thing is, I don't, I don't think of it in that way or experience it in that way because I mean, the way that I also look at it now is, you know, I, I have like a very serious impulse disorder. Okay. But you, so, but it's still Tourette's though. Well, what I'm saying is, is like that feeling that we're going to call Tourette's. Okay. Like it was, uh, like I had an extreme impulse disorder. Okay. Like any feeling that I felt, I, in, I indulged right. in. Right. Okay. Okay. Now again, by no means that maybe that's an involuntary feeling that I had. Right. And I had no way to do it differently. Right. So over the years, I've gone through a lot of with a lot of work on myself and training to really learn how to become less impulsive as well. Right. And so what are the, so what are some of those things that people can use even if they're not uh, doing Tourette's? The thing is, it's, what can people do? It's, I wish it was- you can't a, take the course, like, because the courses where, you guys take it where and where? Well, no, many? unfortunately, the courses don't even exist at the moment right okay. now. Okay. So, but if they had the courses, like, yeah, someone can't, couldn't afford to go to a school or go to a place or get into a program I, like that. Um, meditation, it sounds like, is one good thing I that think, could probably you know, help. I think doing one things like that is meditation. Of course, when I had Tourette's and someone said do meditation, I said, you know, go screw yourself. Right. It's, but then you commented on, yeah, but, right, but then it probably know, helped, huh? It helped, but it was so hard so for me hard. because as I was just oh, describing, I, I had sure. no, it wasn't quiet on the inside. And it's easy to oh, say to no, someone, dude, well, just try to be quiet. It's like a Best Buy in there, Black so, Friday inside of you. It was crazy. Yeah. So, you know, I think, I think the best advice for somebody is try to begin to challenge things if you want that. Right. And I wish that I could say... What what do they do in the four hours? And the just, four hours with respect to somebody that yeah, you beat it? Yeah, yeah, because you just tell them what you just said for four hours? Or? No, you don't tell them that for four hours. So the thing is, is I mean, the methodology, it's, it's a profound way to help somebody um, basically break limiting beliefs mm -hmm. um, and help them become more rational. Mm. So, you know, so it's like it's trying, if you're trying to help somebody with, like, let's say you're still, you know, an adult and you walk around still believing in Santa Claus. Mm -hmm. um, we can work with somebody to start to ask them a bunch of questions where they on their own begin to realize Santa Claus isn't true. Ah, uh, I see. 
Okay. That's a really cool process to take somebody with that you need to be very skilled to do. Yeah. You got to be skilled. You have to be skilled to help lead somebody to help them deduce things on their own. Yes. That's a valuable skill. So what, and what made it so powerful and why it could happen in four hours is because somebody wasn't deductively telling me it mm, so yes. somebody could so for instance if, if i mean it would be insane if somebody goes up to somebody with tourette's because they've heard this interview <laughs> and, and go uh don't tick yeah that would be couple, not only would it be yeah. insane it would be um a couple pointers think, for you bucko <laughs> yeah i i don't even think that would be moral it would be it would i don't think that would be a good thing it'd be old school for sure part of the reason that i was able to why it's so permanent is mm. because i was able to as you said, deduce on my own yeah. those realizations. And when you have that type of realization, it's it's like a perceptual shift. It's permanent. Yes. So does it mean that I have no feelings in my body anymore? Absolutely not. Do I still feel that Tourette itch? Very little. Yeah. And I still do things to help change my relationship with it. But to say that I have Tourette syndrome at this point, I think would be insulting to somebody that really is struggling. Right deeply with it um so within those four hours you know it's 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 trying to help somebody it's not about reframing or you know feel the feeling but don't do it it's really helping them have really neat insight into how they relate with that feeling and also figure out what's going on in their life that might be causing that feeling yeah and that's how we were able to how i not i how nancy was able you know to help people yeah so quickly and the cool thing is is that this past year a documentary came out and you can literally see on the screen, you can see this happen. Hmm. You can see within four hours, you know, um, it's, 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 inc- it's profound yeah. to watch. And I really believe that, you know, one day that this, you know, th- sort of this methodology and also uh, this movie can really open the eyes for a lot of people because I believe that this can open the doors for Tourette's, for ADD, ADHD, social anxiety, anxiety. Um, OCD. Yeah, no, I think some of the stuff you're saying, it's like, even if someone had Tourette's, right? Who knows what other stuff builds around that over time and magnifies it so much more? Yes. Whereas even if you can go back through and scrape away some of those things by helping them deduce in their own time, in their own react, so it actually, yes. they figure it out. Which is such an articulate thing that some therapists and stuff will be able to do because they ask you questions and they help you figure out in a way where you figure it out. Yes, they don't. You're not telling somebody something. Um, then they can, you, you can knock away so much of the stuff that 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 makes everything so much tougher. You know, whether it be Tourette's or I mean, it's some of the stuff they're using in a lot of other programs in some ways. But I think that's fascinating, man. Um, you know, and it's just the power of like people helping people. You know, I always wished I had a stutter. They had a dude by us named Douglas Huval, right? And he was, I, he might not even had a stutter. He might have been pretty ignorant, honestly, but he was a nice kid. But I remember he had a stutter in school and I thought it was the coolest thing ever. Mm. And I'd impersonate him and the teacher would be like, what are you doing? You're making fun of him. And I'm like, nah, I just, I want this. I want to be like this. You know, this guy's so unique. Um, but yeah, I guess, uh, I don't know, man. It's definitely fascinating and it's definitely seems like it's been quite a journey, you know? I can feel that you're passionate about it, you know? It's been an incredible journey. Yeah. I mean, I've learned, you know, just so much about just the human human behavior, human, the way that we interact with each other, the way that we treat people. Yeah. And that's really why, you know, when I started speaking 10 years ago, it was all about kindness because basically people, people were making judgments and assumptions about me without knowing me, mm-hmm. which is normal, right? It's normal. You see somebody... You you think you, it's okay to think negative things about people. Yeah. The question is is do you really know what's going on? Right. And so I think it was a neat thing because here it was I was doing all these crazy things and people were acting on those judgments or acting on those assumptions and then they they took whatever they saw me doing as if it was truth. Mm. Um. And so really when I started speaking, the message was about the first phrase that I used was live and let live. Yeah. I want to live my life. You live your life. But really, it's like, look, if you don't, like, can you recognize that whatever you're thinking about that person, you don't really know? Right. And if you don't really know, no matter how much hate you have towards that person, can we at least be kind? Right. Can we, can we at least treat people with kindness, even if we have really negative feelings about them? Because we don't 
really know. Ultimately, no. Yeah, you don't know if the guy's being rude to you, you know, or is having a tough morning or just cut you off. You don't know if he, you know, his house just burned down or, you know, he just lost somebody or if he even just killed us. You, you know, you don't know if he just killed somebody. Like, you don't know what he's going through, you know, no. like you don't know what somebody's going through sometimes. Um, but yeah, no, look, I think it's fascinating to hear about. It. It's fascinating to hear, like, you, you know, like your respect for the Tourette's condition, you know, like the level that you feel like, you, you know, you had it, how you envisioned it, how you. Um, you know, recognize it inside of yourself and, you know, ways that you use to uh, deteriorate it, you know, or, 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 or quell it to a place that's more manageable for you and, and, and that you're able to be aware of that at the same time so that you can, you know, communicate it to other people. I mean... Yeah, I mean, it's definitely, you know, because I was like, does it, I was like, does Mark, it doesn't seem like he has Tourette's, you know? But then when you get in and you hear about it, it's like, Oh, well, this is very relatable, I feel like, you know. Um, but uh, there's a couple of videos we want to play real quick of a couple of... Nick, sure. you want to lead us into that? Yeah, and we actually had one caller uh, call in with a question, too, okay. about living with it. But yeah, Let's we can pop the headphones on. Sure. And then after that, we'll look at some examples of Tourette's in pop culture, and we'll get your grade on how it was depicted. Sure. Okay. It's a great uh, photo there. It was pretty good, actually. How's it quite a stencil? Is it a stencil? You know, I don't know who did that. Some man sent that in, probably, honestly. Some dude. Well, that's actually really a... Uh, trying to fuck, probably. So there's a lot of... We had some real lurkers, man. <laughs> Beautiful lurkers. Hey, Yvonne. I'm a huge fan. I have a question for your um, guest who has, who had Tourette's Syndrome. Um, how, how often did you get laid while you had Tourette's Syndrome? And how hard was it to get women or men, if you're into that? Um, I respect that. And then how often have you gotten late since you stopped your Tourette's syndrome? Um, all right, God bless you. Good night. <laughs> that God bless you came in a little surprising, but I still respect it. Onward. Oh, man, it was so uncomfortable with women. Really? Oh, man. Well, partly because how little self-confidence I had. Yeah. Again, it's all, you know, it's always easy. Okay. When you're looking at someone from the outside, you think you know what's going on. Yeah. But on the inside, I, you know, I, I did not feel that confident about myself. Oh, yeah. It looked like I was super confident because of the level of compensation that I was doing all the time. Yeah. Were so, you doing crazy stuff? Were you wearing necklaces and stuff like that? Like, were you trying no, to No, like, it wasn't like I was trying to look like I was super rich, but right. I was trying to look like I was put together. Right. And it wasn't a shit show on the inside. Right. Were you wearing like a... um tuxedo and stuff like that not no luckily no yeah. i still had some semblance of like let's try to be oh good 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 people. yeah um yeah you can't be showing up like it's a damn you know like you're uh joe you know joe black or something exactly. at every at a <laughs> yeah at a, at a rave or something but um, it was weird with women i mean it was i mean just imagine hooking up with a girl and yeah you just crush it now is it easier now I, you it is infinitely easier but it's also just because I have more confidence with myself. Yeah. So after I, you know, I beat the Tourette syndrome. I mean, just to, I mean, sex Dude. is one thing. Yeah. Just imagine sitting with a girl and not saying the riskiest thing. Oh yeah, I can't. <laughs> But I could definitely say this, dude. Beat Tourette's, let's fuck would be the best book ever, even though <laughs> that is not what we're talking about. But I do want to let people know that uh, that that um, you have a book. You have two books now. What do you have? Tell me. No, about I it. have a book that came out about six years ago, and uh -huh. it's called "What Makes You Tick." Okay. Um, and but another book would be, I think, uh, really good at this point. You know, because I that book, I had just started uh, ESP and 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 beating like the 90% when that book came out. Mm -hmm. um, and I also just wasn't as open about my participation in ESP at the moment just mm -hmm. because, you know, there was a bot, there was bad stuff about ESP back then. There's even more bad stuff about ESP now. And Is it like stuff. Landmark? Is it like a group kind of? No, it's unfortunately, it's, I mean, it's oh, definitely in the same realm, you know, it's in terms right. of it's a, a group of people that are trying to help people, yeah. um, you know, but now it's in the news with a bunch of controversy around it and things like that. And that's not the set. Is it, w did we have, uh, oh, we have Michael Rosenbaum on here. Yes. Unfortunately. Yes. Same group. Yes. Oh, wow. So it's, you know, it's, it's been an, a, a profound journey to a, a friend sent to me recently. So here I used to have Tourette's mm -hmm. and I used to experience so much prejudice because I was taking the N word in public. Mm hmm. And now that I've beaten Tourette's, and now I'm just a white guy walking around, it's, in a way, I'm experiencing more prejudice now. Wow. And so, 
Um, yeah, welcome to the club, dude. <laughs> you know, at least you got to say it a bunch. Yeah, you know? and I, like, I hope that made get out here on an island. Well, I hope that made sense. Isn't that the the reason I said about and now I'm a white male is because white males in our culture don't experience a lot of prejudice. Oh, relative to a lot of uh, you know, compa- a white male compared to someone with Tourette's experiences less. I see what you're saying. So it's interesting now of of still seeing is that even without the Tourette's, I'm still learning so many lessons about prejudice yeah. and the nature of how we treat people and how we label people, whether it's a group or or a syndrome or whatever it might be. Yeah. So um, yeah, we battle with that too. Like you know, in comedy and and just talking about stuff, it's like it's different. You know, I mean, hell, I don't even think you could legally have you couldn't even have Tourette's today in Los Angeles. Like they, I feel like they'd hang you at the at the cross if you dropped a couple of bombs out there. You know, like when I was growing up, you could have some Tourette's. You know, you'd have a dude. You know, everybody. You know, people could have something. You know. They carried a dude over there in the in the area, and he sets off a couple of M bombs or uses some, but inappropriate terms. People were more understanding. Can you even have Tourette's nowadays and be accepted? Well, the thing is, I mean, people were. I was really open, and I, you know, my family really was supportive, and we pushed it. I would always tell people I had Tourette's. I would make announcements on oh, planes and yeah. my classes. I think in general, most people are. I think at the core, do want to be understanding. I think what's difficult is that we live in a time where where people don't there's not a lot of critical thinking and and people are so quick to yeah just be mean just be mean or jump on the bandwagon of being mean with other people and whatever it is they don't want to communicate so um it's weird that they would say someone with Tourette's has a problem communicating and now it's like so i'd rather have Tourette's than be you know one of these social justice warriors who's just beating everybody who doesn't want to have a conversation sometimes you know well i think i mean one of the big things that i in trying to talk about kindness and stuff is it's interesting how we as a society, we fight bullying yeah. with bullying. Right. We fight hate with hate. Yeah. And the question is, do we want to, do we want to continue to perpetuate that? Or do we recognize maybe there's other ways that we can treat people? I love that, man. I agree with that a bunch, you know, it's like even, yeah, it, it fascinates me sometimes how much, uh, people will be hateful and just because it matches their point of view that it's okay to be hateful you know it's like um oh you can't be hateful but as long as but i can you know it's like yeah how do you not recognize i mean being hateful is being hateful you know but it, 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 go on well i want to say it's not like i'm above that right i used to so much all the time fight hate with hate yeah you know even when you know i was growing up with my older brother who was gay man i was one of those people like, pioneering you know if you didn't like gay marriage oh i hated you right and then luckily, you know, through a lot of my education and going through some of the classes too, I've started to really want to be different Yeah, and recognize, you know what, I do, th- there are things that I, I really dislike or people that I don't dislike. And the question is, okay, can I still be different even if I feel that way? Yeah. Yes. That's it. That's the biggest thing. It's like, yeah, I know some great people who don't like, who probably would be, who, who would be against gay marriage. Right. And I'm not gonna hate those people for that. They're gr- they're good people just because their belief system or whoever taught them or something they that's their thing. Like it doesn't mean that they would be rude to gay people or that they would treat them differently. They may have some old you know a religious belief and that's their thing. It's like or anybody's religion. That doesn't mean I have to believe it. It doesn't no. mean I have to agree with it. But it also doesn't mean I have to shun somebody because you know um, their beliefs are different than mine. You know it's. It's baffling to me that we do that, or and why would we do it? You know, uh, because it's not understanding. It's it's not accepting, really. Well, the reason I think we do it is because I think we're not aware of how we all do do that. Yeah, and that was also. Mm, that's a good point. And it's also, you know, it was like part of my journey with the Tourette syndrome. It was, I couldn't even see the the even just about the fear of losing Tourette's. I wasn't even willing to look at that. Maybe not even willing. I didn't even know. No. And so it was with help that I could start to become more aware of that. And then when you start realizing like, you know what, I also don't like a lot of people or yeah. you know what, I also feel negative feelings towards people. That's when you can start to have a little bit more compassion when you see someone else doing it, you know, but now we live in a time where, you know, someone's caught on video saying some prejudiced thing and, and then what do we do to that person? Yeah. We're completely prejudiced to that person. Yeah, instead of offering it, how, how can we, what can we learn from this? How can with this person, you know, how can we accept them into a fold and make them feel comfortable and make them feel like, oh, we all make mistakes, yes. you know? And that doesn't mean you can't hold them accountable still. Yeah. 
Agreed, 100%. But the question is, can you hold someone accountable and still be kind? St you know, and... Do you think it's the media that's more like that or humanity is more like that? I struggle with that a lot. I think the media is just an extension of humanity. I think it's, you know, uh, well, it's like, you know, when someone talks about a company, like someone's like, well, this corporation. Yeah. And it's like, look, it's, yes, it's a company, but it's just people. Yeah. <laughs> it's just people. It's people. It's not a robot. You know, it's, it's, yeah. uh, it's people. And so um, I think this is hard for all of us, but uh, I think it's, it's just really what I've come to learn so much throughout all this journey of, you know, with the Tourette's, without Tourette's, my experience now in the company, experiencing a lot of prejudice of... I don't really know a lot. Mm. I do want to stand up for things, but um, I think there's different ways we can do it. And I think, you know, when you look at history and you look at someone like Martin Luther King, his whole message of nonviolence, I mean, here, look what he stood up for. Yeah. But he did it nonviolently yeah. with compassion. That narrative is basically non existent right now. Yeah. And instead, it's sort of, you know, we live in a time where if you think somebody did something wrong, you point the finger and. And people will quote Martin Luther King Jr. and then go out and beat somebody's ass, too. <laughs> it's like, this is insane, you know? But yeah, I, look, man, I love some of the ways that you... Uh, I love hearing some of this and being reminded of it. Like, you know, I find every day, like, I'm me, I'll be mean about stuff, and then I'll realize that I had a part in something. I'll have to go back and, you know, apologize or, you know, I mean, it's... And I'm with you, too. I, I mean, this is a, a constant journey for myself. It's yeah. not like... I'm above this. I don't do this. It's but it's more of I. I want to keep becoming a person that's not like that. Yeah. I want to become a. Yeah, I, I, I want to become a person who's, you know what? I can feel really negative thoughts about somebody and still, be kind. Yeah. That's not easy. Say what you mean. Don't say it mean. My brother always says that to his kids sometimes. Say what you mean. Don't say it mean. That's mm. what he says. I mean, it's just one little thing about what you're saying. But yeah, I agree, man. It's like I'll get upset at groups of people sometimes and. And then I'll be like, well, what's really going on here, you know? And uh, But I think we're getting to a place like that inside where people are thinking about those types of things more. Let's look at a couple more videos yeah. real quick so we can shut it down over here. We got to... Uh... Cool. This is from the 1970s, Quincy. Okay. Quincy. I don't know if I've seen this. That's the hell of Paradol, isn't it? I'll be okay once I get up there concentrate. I better go see when they want you. We've got a courtroom here, and the kids got the, the rets, I guess. I feel like I just swallowed a butterfly collection. Well, you're gonna be fine. I just, uh, I don't wanna scare them. Uh, I feel so small. Well, just think of David and Goliath. Yeah, but I don't have a slingshot. Dr. Quincy, I, I don't know if I can really go through with this. Oh, you're gonna be fine. You can do it, Tony. Honest, you can. There you go, and that's Quincy is the movie, and it's about... It, it was a TV show about uh, some doctor, psychologist mm. that helped people. I've never actually seen that clip before. Oh, well, there you go. Nick did some good digging right there. <laughs> you put uh, him on a disease at night, and that guy will really show up in the morning with some wild clips. Yeah, so for the people who are just listening, that guy, he just had like facial tics and stuff. How did that look? That looked pretty... I mean, I think you have a lot of people who do those kinds of tics that don't have Tourette syndrome. I'm sure you've met people that you know, blink their eyes and stuff. And also, if someone's listening and you've been blinking your eye, you, know, you don't have to freak out. It's not yeah. like you have Tourette's. It's, you might like, have dust. You might need an air purifier. <laughs> so that grade for that one? That was pretty low. I'm not sure what was... He was also doing something not, with his hands not, as well. Not in an intensity, like his depiction. How? Yeah, that did that actor, good, did he do a good job? What did he do on a one to 10 of that Tourette's? I actually thought that was a pretty good. I mean, especially with the eyes. I mean, that's not... What do you think, a seven? I'll give it a six. Okay. I'll wow. Six. six. <laughs> Tough grader. But wow. That was lauded like at the time when I was doing digging of like a, uh, just a good depiction and and very educational. I thought it was this good. This is my first standard. So I could give it an it's eight fine. too. No, yeah. Give it a eight, six. You know? that's, Fuck that's, it, man. It's Tourette's. The guy barely did it. He did it twice, you know? You got to, I want to shake up. I want to see it real shake up. Here we go. Shake this is uh, Amy, Amy Poehler in Deuce Bigelow, Male Gigolo. Okay. Hello. Oh my is this God. Ruth? Yeah, I'll be right down. God damn it! Nice day, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Shove it up your ass! Wow. Jeez. You okay? I'm sorry. I have Tourette's syndrome, and it causes me to have these uncontrollable outbursts. It's not so bad. Yeah, it's okay. I mean, you get used to it. Ball sweat! Anus! Anus like a... You know, there are <laughs> some places I can't go. Nipple biter! Da, 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 da. 
What are you talking about? <laughs> oh my it. god. <laughs> I can't believe Rob Schneider and Rob Schneider seems like the guy who tried to bang out chicks with Tourette's or different <laughs> syndromes and stuff. He's been in some dark stuff. I would give that one a lower one because that's like I would give that more like a three or four. Okay, and why I mean, is one that? One thing is, is you know, I was aware that I was saying the bad word. I would try to muffle it. Okay, you know, so I used to like add words even yeah. sometimes. So if I was going to say the n word, sometimes I would add the word dad. Oh yeah, so I go eh, and then it would Nana. yeah, you know, yeah. to try to muffle it where that one seemed. Or just yeah. start singing a rap song. Yeah. Or you I know, would well, say like Chinkapotamus or something like that. <laughs> well, a lot of times I would I would go, huh? Hi, hi. Even if it wasn't a bad word, like if right. I felt the tick, like ah, hi. Oh, right on. Like you're doing magic. Yeah. <laughs> like you're starting like you're introducing people to something. Oh, hi there. <laughs> yeah. Just... Wow, bro. Now that's pretty cool because then you're in like a wild it's almost like you're in a game with yourself sometimes. Yeah, it was just a nightmare of a game. It was. It was. A- it's like your move, central nervous system, you know? Yeah. Let's look at one more and get a rating on this one, man. So, what do you give? Amy Poehler got a two on that. It was a bit it outlandish. Was three. Huh? It was three or four. Three. Three, uh, yeah. Small window between Amy Poehler and that guy from Quincy. <laughs> Here's our last one from uh, TV's Seventh Heaven. Oh, my Until God. Until God said. God said. God said. God said. God said. God said. <laughs> They're in church, obviously. Well, I, I, I appreciate the help. The help, the help, the help, the help, the help, the help, the help. His mother says he has ADD. My son doesn't have Tourette's syndrome. No, please, don't run away. Your ADD, I could deal with. But this, mm. you know, I still think I can bear it. Mm. Hmm. Dad's not accepting. I actually give that one a nine. I mean, that's pretty, I think it's a good depiction of the Tourette's of mm-hmm. what that's like. And I think it's also a good depiction of the parents. I think it's really hard. Yeah. You know, I don't, it's the, the, it wasn't just like I had Tourette's. The whole family had Tourette's. Ah. Uh, mm. You know, I would tell people when I would walk into a room or a restaurant and I take the N word and I'm with some friends. Yeah. No one knows who said it. Right. Oh, that's fun. Everyone, I mean, it's not fun. It's crazy. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Everyone turns and just looks. Everyone's just as much of a culprit that I am. Yeah. Oh, that's true, huh? You're like, Jesus. Everybody's looking at your mom like she says it all the time. Did you right. ever pretend it was your mom? So you were- I didn't <laughs> yeah. pretend it was my mom. But it was you know, one of those things where you that kind of understanding didn't come until later. Did you have to dress like a wigger kind of kid just to pull it off? <laughs> No, but I, w- I mean, sometimes I would leave when I would go to movie theaters, I put washcloth in my mouth. I had just one time when I was younger, I had a very serious situation with taking the N word, but knock on wood, I was very lucky. And also, you know, I did whatever I, because I wasn't, I didn't have negative intent yeah. to do something. A lot of times if I did say the N word and there was a black person that, that heard me, I would actually just continue on with my day as right. normal. Because usually I was, I imagined if you're going to say that to somebody and you're trying to hurt them or, you know, really get their attention, you wouldn't just uh, pretend like it didn't just happen. Right, right, right. Right. Yeah. You need to, yeah. You need to live accordingly with what's actually occurring in your life is that it's something that happened and you're just going on and living your life. Because if not, you're standing there looking at them, (laughs) then it's like you're waiting to figure it out. Yes. And it's going to be an interesting conversation. A lot of, uh, yeah, man. I mean, I... I just can't even imagine. Did, what was it? Did you ever get a bonus word that you never got again that kind of popped in? I mean, I've said everything you can imagine. I mean, you know. What was one of your favorites that would fucking flare up every now and then, dude? Anything around the holidays or something? Ah, <laughs> oh, so hard to say, Theo. I mean, I had. Anytime I see someone, the mm-hmm. funny thing is they'll go, Mark, do you remember that time when you, you know, this happened? You take, I'm like, do you understand how many times that I ticked? How many of those moments I've had with so many people? <laughs> one funny one when I was in a fraternity, somebody punched, uh, it was, we had, you know, there was like a drunken night at the house and oh, somebody yeah. had punched a wall. Oh, mm-hmm. excuse me, had punched a hole in the wall and the whole pledge glass had to come in front of it and I started ticking, I did it. Oh, yeah? Even though I didn't do it. <laughs> oh, damn. You know, things like that, you know, right. sort of just like everyone starts laughing yeah, and, you know. It's like you're on trial for murder. <laughs> yeah, you're just saying. I'm guilty, yeah, Roger. Yeah. I'm guilty. <laughs> wow. You know. Mark Elliott, man, thank you so much, man, for coming in and spending time with us today, man. This has been uh, fascinating. It's been a fun conversation. Mm-hmm. Um, and I hope uh, your holidays were great. Thank you so much, man, and uh, hope you had a great holiday, too. Yeah. Amen, man. I'll see you in the future. Appreciate it. Cheers, brother. Thanks, Nick. Thanks, Nick.
and Michael Rosenbaum was in, and that was about the group was called Nexus or something. Is that a different or? Ex- I think it was. It's the parent company of a bunch yeah. of different companies, but. Really, what's been the most fascinating part about it? Grape for me. or something. I've seen one of them around town before, or something. Or L. A- 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 no, because it, it was. It I mean, might it be was a different. That was more of a restaurant. It I might think. have been a restaurant. But it was, you know, it's so interesting because you know uh, Keith Raniere and Nancy Salzman, who are the ones that created you know ESP, which are really responsible for why, you know, I don't have, you know, created the tools that help me beat Tourette's syndrome. It's just so fascinating of how different they're being portrayed in the media right now. Oh, because they're the group that. Those are the same people that got in trouble with the sex cult or whatever? And all that stuff, yes. Really? You know, so it's it's so interesting for me because... The same just, people. Same people. So it's so interesting for me because it's just like as I was describing with the Tourette syndrome, is that here people saw something. They just saw one moment in time. Mm. And then they make that one moment in time as if that's a truth. And then they act on those truths. Mm. Um, and so, you know, people that I, you know, that are dear friends that are doing really good things in the world, things that I'm doing in the world that are really good. It's so interesting to see then how people can treat you just when they hear that there's a label. Wow. And this is why now really with my speaking, it's cool because 10 years ago I started talking about kindness and it, it couldn't be more apropos now, but it's not even just about Tourette's syndrome. It's really looking at uh, the title that I have now is called guilty until proven innocent. Mm. And really looking at not only just the nature of how we place verdicts on our own life, yeah. like with the Tourette's, mm-hmm. was really was my own mind placing a verdict, but also the way that we place verdicts on other people's life. Wow. And yeah, I could see that being a, uh, an, like a, a good turn at like the, you know, as a second half of a speech or if you're giving a, you know, teaching people, you know? Yeah. It's perfect. You know? Did you, so you had experiences with those people. I mean, you, they taught you ESP. They took you through that program. Of course. I mean, Keith and Nancy and, and the, the, these are dear friends of mine. And then the, cause we had Mike and Michael Rosenbaum in here and they, did you ever see them as being like cult-like? No, the thing is, I mean, it's just such a funny thing even, you know, growing up, you know, you hear about cults and all those sorts of things. Oh, and yeah, then wizardry. You, wizardry. And then it's just kind of interesting is that once you're on the other side and you see actually how, you know, when you start using words like cult or something like that, like basically it stops people from, from critically thinking anymore. That's true. And, you know, versus, okay, look, you know, maybe th- someone's doing something that you don't like or you don't know, but the question is, is like, well, you know, what? why is that bad? You know, if they're just doing something that's different than you. Right. So would you say more, they were a helpful group of people that just had some maybe wild sexual activities sometimes. I don't, even, I don't know anything about that stuff. Oh, so you didn't even know anything about that. I don't even know about that wow. stuff. What I just know is that these are people that have done profound things in the world. Wow. And, uh, you know, stuff like with the Tourette's project, obviously it's a little bit on hold at the moment. Right. But I'm so excited to bring that out into the world. I mean, I think that we can help millions and millions of people wow. yeah, it's so fascinating it's just because yeah like uh yeah they get you get labeled a you know a, a involved in a behavior because there's a lot of people out here doing wild sex you know what i'm saying i get but, invites to do all kind of things you know they got some fellow almost paid me 10 grand to go and you know thug out his wife up there at a hostel somewhere outside of san francisco so, but i'm just saying it's like there's people and that guy might be a stand-up guy at a you know at a ford dealership or something you just never know who you know who's doing what and does it matter well that's the thing because not only do i not know about that stuff is that I think the deeper and the bigger question for our society is more is what I know isn't good is not about a hypothetical, but trial by media. Oh, yeah, it's horrible. And things like this where is that really how we want to be? Mm-mm. Where, you know, you have, you know, and I mentioned sort of it's like, you know, if you point at somebody now, it's, it's have you ever seen the movie The Crucible? Mm-mm. If you haven't seen the movie, see The Crucible. With, um, so Harriet Beecher Stowe, who's in there? It was, it was a long time ago, but you. I think it's Harriet. It's. Again, it's. I'm not saying if if you th- if you think something is wrong, it's important to speak up about that. But how you do that's really important. Yeah. And uh, you know, with respect to the media and how we treat people, whether it's through allegations, whether it's through gossip, whether it's through any of these things, oh, yeah. can we still be kind? Yeah, the media does not. The media does not set a good example because it's. Um, you know, and maybe we don't. If it's just an extension of us, maybe we don't. But yeah, it's interesting. You know, they don't put in those articles. This is a group that's helped millions of people or hundreds of thousands of people. Well, and it's it's and it's just saying, you know, these are people being wild, and you know, 
you know, who knows what else. Yeah, I think it's really important that we as adults, we have to just be a lot more mindful with respect to those types of communications. Did you ever get invited to anything wild? Was there ever anything like that? You never, th- you never thought anything that about it. That could have been pretty cool, though, huh? Yeah. But, oh, uh, dude, definitely. If you're the Tourette's dude at an you orgy. <laughs> bro, you'd but be I think straight it's, up crossing guard, bro, just directing <laughs> traffic, dude. All aboard! <laughs> fuck, fuck! I never was. And, and more than that, though, I, uh, it really, I've just kind of continued to learn so much. And so it's been so beautiful of having Tourette's, experiencing prejudice, not having experiencing Tourette's and experience, uh, experiencing prejudice. And... I really want to become more of a voice in our country and for the narrative of, can we be kind? Yeah. Even if you think, you know, things are bad that are happening. Is there a chance that what they were doing, like it, they were doing something like roping young women into this sex thing and it is completely damnable and you just aren't aware of it and you only saw the good? Like, is there is there ever objective times when people are wrong and you have to be like, no, you can't do that? The thing is, I don't even want to comment on something that's like crazy hypotheticals like that because it, then it even validates that it, it's, it's to, to be speaking about that in the way is legitimate. Mm-hmm. What I do know is, is that even, in, even if you know somebody did something really bad, What's so cool is, is that we have gold standards in our society of how to treat people still. Mm. Maybe we can end on this. You can go in on YouTube, and on YouTube you can find a bunch of videos where someone has murdered somebody's, uh, uh, like someone has murdered someone's son, Mm -hmm. and you see the mother of that child completely treat that murderer with love. Yeah. And look, that's someone who's still being held accountable. But the mother doesn't need to go destroy that person's life. Right. So I think that's really the bigger thing. You know, in life, you know, people make mistakes. There's failures. Things happen. Bad things happen sometimes. But even with that, can we still treat people with decency? Yeah. So it's not really about whether it's something did or didn't. It's it's what I do know is what's happening right now in our culture isn't good. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, and I think a lot of it does come back to how we treat each other. Yeah, and it's funny, when you treat somebody with decency, then they, it really, in the end, leaves them having to think more about what they actually did, because they can't use that energy to then be angry back at you. It's not about you and them. It's about, uh, you know, then it's just them having a, th- you know, being set with the thoughts of what they did, you know. Um, I don't know, it's fascinating, man. I mean, we're, you know, we're late bloomers in here, so definitely learning as we go. Uh, yeah. But thank you so much for being here, Mark Elliott. Thanks so much. Yep. Oh